a very good morning to you all. I am Dr. Santosh Paul, Professor and Head, Department of Pediatric and Preventive Dentistry, Sri Rajiv Gandhi College of Dental Sciences, Bengaluru. As you all know, dentistry has nine subspecialties and periodontics is one among them. Today, I would introduce the subject periodontics or pediatric dentistry to you. The learning objectives for today's session includes the definition of periodontics, the various unique aspects of periodontics, the aims and objectives of periodontics, differences between a child and an adult patient should know about the periodontic treatment triangle and the scope of periodontics. So in short, the word periodontics is made of two words, pedo and dontics. Pedo is derived from the Greek word pies, which means child, and dontic stands for study of the tooth. So in effect, pedodontics is derived from two words, pedo plus dontics, wherein pies, which is a Greek word, that is where pedo is derived from, and dontic stands for the study of the tooth. Pedodontics has different spellings. It's spelled as P-E-D-O, that's American spelling, and P-A-E-D-O, that's a British spelling. It's also known as pediatric dentistry, it's P-E-D-I, which is American spelling, and P-A-E-D-I, which is a British spelling. Now, why do we need a separate subject, pediatric dentistry? You all know the child is not a miniature adult, but an individual with unique anatomical, physiological, medical, dental, emotional, and psychological characteristics. Coming on to definition of pediatric dentistry, which is given in 2008 by the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry. Pediodontics or pediatric dentistry is an age defined specialty that provides primary and comprehensive, preventive and therapeutic oral health care for infants and children through adolescence, including those with special health care needs. So the definition has got three parts. The first part states that it's an age-defined specialty. The second part states about the treatment it provides, that it provides primary and comprehensive, preventive and therapeutic oral health care for infants and children through adolescence. And the last part states that it includes those individuals with special health care needs. So this is a definition given by the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry in 2008. There's another definition which is given by the Illustrated Dictionary of Dentistry, which states that pedodontics is a division of dentistry concerned with the diagnosis and treatment of conditions of the teeth and mouth in children, including restoring and maintaining the primary, mixed and permanent dentition, applying preventive measures for dental caries and periodontal disease, preventing intercepting and correcting occlusal problems and training the child to accept dental care. There's a very comprehensive definition which is given in the Illustrated Dictionary of Dentistry, which again talks about the treatment which you undertake, that is the treatment which you do in the primary dentition, mixed dentition, permanent dentition, application of preventive measures, and the main diseases being periodontal disease and dental caries, and of course, preventing, intercepting, and correcting the occlusal problems which occurs during the mixed dentition period and early permanent dentition period. And of course, very important part being training the child to accept dental care so that they become good patients in future. There's another definition which is given by Dr. Shobha Tandon in 2008, wherein periodontics can be defined as a science which deals with laying down the foundation of healthy dentition and orofacial complex from the prenatal period through adolescence. 
Pediatric dentistry, in short, encompasses a variety of disciplines, techniques, procedures, and skills that share a common basis with other specialties, but are modified and adapted to the unique requirements of infants and children and adolescents, and of course, those with special healthcare needs. A little bit about the historical perspective with regard to the specialty of pediatrics or pediatric dentistry. There's mention about children's dentistry in 1800 BC in ancient Egypt. In 1763, Joseph Herlock published the first book on child dentistry. 1764, Robert Burnham, who is known as the father of pediatrics, reiterated the importance of deciduous dentition. In 1927, American Academy of Promotion of Dentistry for Children was formed. In 1940, American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry for Children was renamed as American Society of Dentistry for Children. 1947, American Academy of Pediatrics was founded. However, in 1950s, the dental officers still had the sign that read, no children under 13 years treated in this office. 1969, International Association of Dentistry for Children was established. In 1984, American Academy of Pediatrics was renamed as American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry, the abbreviation being AAPD. A little bit about the historical perspective of pediatrics in India. 1950, Dental College Amritsar starts pediatrics as a specialty. In 1978, pediatrics was introduced as a specialty in the undergraduate curriculum, initially with one or two questions in the operated industry paper and later as section B of the question paper in orthodontics. In 1979, Indian Society of Pediatrics and Preventive Dentistry was formed and held the first conference. Dr. B. R. Watcher, an eminent pediatrics, was made the father of pediatrics in India. ISPPD was formed on the belief that every child has a fundamental right to his or her total oral health and the society has an obligation to fulfill this faith. 1988, as per the Dental Council of India rules, Pediatrics was recognized as a separate specialty in the undergraduate curriculum. Following Amritsar, the next to introduce the specialty were King George Medical College, Lucknow, in the year 1967, Postgraduate Institute, Chandigarh, in 1978, and Nair Hospital Dental College, Mumbai, in 1982. In 1985, the fifth in succession and the first in South India was Manipal College of Dental Sciences. Manipal under Dr. Shobha Tandon. In our institution, the Faculty of Department of Pediatric and Preventive Dentistry, which is headed by me, has two other professors, Dr. Umayazar, Dr. Divya Reddy, and two readers, Dr. Smita and Dr. Mihir Naik. Now let's come on to the unique aspects of pediatrics. I mentioned to you about the definition of pediatrics, wherein it was defined as a age-defined speciality. So we start with the unique aspects that our speciality is age-defined, whereas all other dental specialties are procedure-defined. For example, if you take endodontics, it's limited to doing root canal treatment procedures. Oral surgery, it's limited to doing surgical procedures, whereas periodontics is limited to the procedures which we do for the periodontium, whereas our speciality is not procedure-defined it's age defined and pediatric dentists provide care for specific age group of patients. There is no limitation to what type of treatment they provide. The second unique aspect, we provide in our specialty primary and comprehensive care. Pediatric dentists are primary providers and there's no need for referral of patients. Parents can choose to have their children evaluated and treated by a pediatric dentist, just like they choose to have their child treated by a pediatrician. Third, the preventive care. You all have heard that prevention is better than cure. A great emphasis is given to preventive dentistry in the subject of pediatric dentistry and also in developing a positive attitude to children, in, to positive attitude to dentistry in children of today to help them to be 
healthier and dental conscious adult of tomorrow. Fourth, infants and children through adolescence, that means the pediatric dentists see patients at any age from birth up to the teens, up to 14 years. And the last part being, we deal with patients with special healthcare needs. Now coming on to unique aspects of periodontics, when you talk about it, we all know that pediatric dentistry had extraction oriented beginnings. In olden days, whenever a child patient was taken to a dentist, what a general practitioners would do would be just extraction of a deep caries lesion or a tooth which is badly affected with caries. So we had an extraction oriented beginning and then we moved on to era of decay interception with more emphasis on diagnostic procedures and maintenance of arch integrity. And so pediatric dentistry emphasizes the prevention of dental diseases. Moving on to the aims and objectives of pediodontics. First one, to promote comprehensive oral health care, to prevent the occurrence of dental problems. Third, to maintain overall health of the child. Fourth, to monitor the developing dentition. Fifth, to instill a positive dental attitude in the child patient. Sixth, to educate the parents. And finally, to update the knowledge through continuing dental education programs. So these are the aims and objectives of pediodontics. We promote comprehensive oral health care. We prevent the occurrence of dental problems by intervening at a very young age. And we have the responsibility to maintain the overall health of the child by taking care of their dental and oral health. And of course, we monitor the developing dentition and then we try to instill a positive dental attitude in the child so that they become a good adult patient. And of course, to educate the parents with regard to maintenance of oral hygiene. And we also try to update the knowledge ourselves through continuing dental education programs. So they're very well versed with whatever later developments which come in the field of pediatric dentistry. Now, I mentioned to you in the beginning that child is not a miniature adult. There are various differences between child and an adult patient. Childhood compared to adulthood is a transitional stage characterized by many changes. A child differs from an adult in various ways. There are physical changes or physical differences, emotional and psychological differences. And of course, you need to consider the behavior which is exhibited in a child as they grow from infancy to adolescence. The type of treatment Consideration of different dentition has to be kept in mind because we'll be seeing the primary dentition, mixed dentition, and young permanent dentition. And more important, it's a dentist-patient relationship and the patient and the parent-dentist relationship which we have to deal with. To summarize some of the physical differences, the first one being respiratory system. The various anatomical differences between a child and an adult with regard to respiratory system, a child's upper respiratory tract is predisposed to obstruction at various sites because of the narrow nasal passages and the tongue and oral cavity is in disproportion and decreased airway diameter characteristics of infants and young adults. All these makes lead to or predisposes a child to obstruction at various sites because of the narrow nasal passages, because of the large tongue, because of the small size of the oral cavity, all these would contribute to a compromised airway. In resting position, the child's ribs are horizontally placed, making the intercostal muscles inefficient. So the diaphragm is a main muscle used for respiration and anything that limits the diaphragmatic exertion should be avoided. A 20 to 30 degree head tilt position is best for treating a child patient. Moving on to the physiological differences in the respiratory system, the alveolar ventilation in, is greater in a child, but the functional residual capacity is lesser. The volume of remaining gas after normal expiration is less. All these features are of importance or relevance to us, especially at the time when we think of giving 
conscious sedation or nitrous oxide oxygen inhalation sedation to a child patient. Moving on to cardiovascular system, the heart rate in a newborn is 120 compared to an adult who has around 72. Of course, it decreases with age and reaches adulthood value by 10 to 12 years. The cardiac output depends mainly on heart rate in children and the stroke volume is low. These are some of the normal vital signs which are seen according to the different ages. You can see the heart rate is very high and you can see it in decreases as the age advances and comes to an adult value by around 12 years of age. The blood pressure is low in a newborn and it comes to an adult value as, it prog as the age progresses. And the respiratory rate is very high in a newborn child. Again, it comes down to normal value as the age progresses. So a newborn has got a respiratory rate of 35 to 55 breaths per minute. Whereas in an adult, you'll find around 12 to 18. Okay. So these are some normal differences in normal vital signs, which you should be aware of. Moving on to gastrointestinal system, the acid concentration is low because of the immature gut mucosa. So the drugs barbiturates are not well absorbed, whereas penicillin are well absorbed in children. The liver and hepatic enzymes are not well developed. So the metabolism of drugs are not very efficient. So these should be kept in mind when we prescribe some medications to children. Differences in renal system. The glomerular filtration rate in short GFR is not well developed and it's very low in children. The tubular secretion is not developed. So again, drug metabolism is affected, resulting in very high drug concentration. Again, something to be kept in mind when we prescribe medications for children. With regard to the body fluids, child's body composition has 80% of water as compared to 60% in adults and any water soluble drug distribution is affected because the volume of distribution is large in a child. Now going on to the emotional and psychological differences. Lower level of psychological competence has to be accepted in a child patient. I'm not saying they're all intellectually disabled. However, the ability to comprehend would be at a lower level compared to an adult. As age advances, they catch up and they mature to an adult level. While treating a child, his or her attachment to parents should always be considered. Children have lesser logic and cognition, and as age progresses, it increases. With regard to behavior, we need to use various behavior management techniques while treating a child. And the impact of first dental visit always influences the future behavior in the dental clinic. Effective and efficient treatment is difficult to achieve in children, not that it's impossible. So behavior management techniques play a very important role in treating a child patient and for the future dental visits. Moving on to treatment considerations. The various dental treatment considerations in children include radiographic considerations, modified cavity design, endodontic consideration due to different root canal morphology, and of course, the oral surgical considerations. Now, you're aware that radiographic films have to be placed within the oral cavity to take a radiograph and it will not be easy in a small child. So the various modifications which are given and which will be taught to you as and when the topic is being discussed. Modified cavity designs. Now we deal with the primary tooth which are smaller in dimensions. Also, we deal with a young permanent tooth, which is not fully mature. So there are modifications which should be done for the cavity design before giving a restoration. Endodontic consideration due to different root canal morphology. Consider a young permanent tooth wherein the root formation is not complete or a primary tooth wherein the root canals are very tortuous and very narrow. So there are modifications to be kept in mind while doing endodontic treatment. Similarly, the oral surgical considerations, even before giving anesthesia, you need to keep in mind the anatomic landmarks, which has to be kept in mind again for administering local anesthesia. 
and as child the small in physical dimension even the anatomical landmarks may be different or at a different level compared to that in an adult patient another aspect which you need to be aware of or which you need to learn about is the pedodontic treatment triangle which has been put forward by Gerald Wright here the child is positioned at the apex of the triangle and the parents and the dental personnel are positioned on either side of the base of the triangle now the major difference which you need to keep in mind between dentistry for child and adult is that in children we have one to two relationship now it's very clear from the triangle which is given there is always a reciprocal relationship between the child and the dental personnel or the dentist and at the same time the child also has a reciprocal relationship with the parents and there has to be a reciprocal relationship between the parents and the dental personnel or the dentist so this is a major difference which we have compared to that of adult dentistry wherein we have a one to one relationship that is a patient to the dentist whereas here we need to interact with the child with the parents and the parents have to interact with the child during the dental treatment at the same time with the dental personnel or the dentist so this concept was put forward by Gerald Wright and it's known as pedodontic treatment triangle which again was modified by Gerald Wright and Ari Cupitzi in 2014 and it's been called as pediatric treatment triangle the basic concepts remains the same wherein the child is placed at the apex of the triangle and the family or the mother primarily and the dentist or the dental personnel are at the base in 2014 the modification given us there's a relevance or the importance of the society which has been stressed upon by Gerald Wright and Eric Kupetsky among the on the pedodontic treatment triangle now let's go on to scope of pedodontics by being an age defined or age specific specialty Pediatric dentistry encompasses disciplines such as behavior guidance, care of the medically and developmentally compromised and disabled patient, supervision of orofacial growth and development, caries prevention, sedation, pharmacological management, and hospital dentistry, as well as other traditional fields of dentistry. So, in effect, it's an age defined specialty, but it encompasses all the disciplines endodontics restorative dentistry prosthodontics orthodontics preventive dentistry and of course pharmacological management and hospital dentistry to be more elaborate on it to be a complete clinician capable of handling majority of the needs of children a dentist should know thoroughly dental materials preventive dentistry techniques he should have a thorough knowledge about the restorative techniques, pulp therapeutic procedures, oral surgery, preventive and interceptive orthodontics, principles of prosthetics, and of course, we should have a thorough understanding of basics with regard to growth and development, pediatric medicine, general and oral pathology, and then nutrition and good understanding of the emotional and psychological needs of children. To show you some of the materials which we use in pediatric dentistry, which is again same as what we use in adult dentistry, the glass enamel cements, formacrisol, astringents, MTA, composites, the resin composites, and the flowable composite, the pit and fissure sealants, and the various designs of toothbrushes. We all should have thorough knowledge about all these materials which has to be used even in pediatric dentistry. Coming on to preventive dentistry techniques, we use topical fluorides for prevention of dental caries, fluoride varnishes, GC tooth moles, and of course the picture given on the lower shows you how the pit and fissure sealant has been applied on a young permanent tooth which is erupted. The deep pits and fissures are susceptible to dental caries and when we see or when we have an individual who is highly prone for dental caries, we could always utilize the pit and fissure sealants to seal it so that we prevent the occurrence of dental caries. Restorative techniques, the resin composites, the visible light cure composites which have been used, you can see the restoration which is done in mixed dentition, a central incisor on the labial aspect which is grossly carious, 
which has been restored with visible light cure composite dressing. And of course, you can see on the bottom, on the right hand side, the stainless steel crown restorations, which we undertake in young children. Coming on to pulp therapeutic procedures, similar to endodontics, we do endodontics, that is pediatric endodontics, and we do root canal treatment in primary molars. Of course, we use different materials for the obturation of the root canals because we need to keep in mind that these are teeth which should resorb or which should undergo physiologic resorption when it's time for the natural tooth to rip. So we use different materials which are used by different techniques to obturate the root canal system in the primary teeth. Building up of fractured tooth with light cure composite resin, even after the tooth becomes non-vital, after the tooth has undergone endodontic therapy, the buildup of the tooth structure is done by a pediatric dentist. Oral surgery, the surgical procedures which can be undertaken in children includes minor oral surgical procedures. You can see an abscess, a dentoalveolar abscess, a patient who has come with trauma, a patient again with a swelling. All these are cases which can be managed in pediatric dentistry. We also undertake minor oral surgical procedures, sometimes in association with oral surgeons. An owl's tooth is a common form of injury which we find in children wherein the tooth comes out of the socket due to some traumatic injury or from a fall. In such cases, we are trained to put the tooth back provided the criteria is met with regard to replantation of the tooth into the socket. Dentoalveolar fractures which can be managed and sometimes we do assist the oral surgeon with regard to planning because this is a child with a mixed dentition period wherein we need to keep in mind the developing permanent tooth bud within the fracture line. Preventive orthodontics. Whenever we under, undertake an extraction at a very young age, we do have the problem of drifting of the adjacent teeth into the edentulous extraction spaces. To prevent that, we have various appliances to prevent the drift of these adjacent teeth into those extraction spaces. And these are called the space maintainers, which form part of preventive orthodontics. The pictures given in the primary dentition gives you a picture with regard to, you can see there is a edentulous space wherein there's a premature extraction of a primary molar. And of course, there's one in the lower arch. And if these are left as such, what would eventually happen would be drifting of these teeth the one mesial to it and the one distal to the edentulous space resulting in closure of the space and inadequate space for the eruption of the permanent successor. And this is an appliance which we fabricate called as a band and loop space maintainer which maintains the space and prevents the closure of the space. And this is what would happen in a radiograph you can see wherein there's a premature loss of second primary molar and there is the first permanent molar which has drifted and close the space for the eruption of the permanent successor. So this is part of preventive orthodontics, which we do in pediatric dentistry. Coming on to interceptive orthodontics, which we undertake, we know that various habits could lead to malocclusion in primary dentition and mixed dentition, which if it's not intercepted, would lead to permanent damage in the adult dentition. Here's a case of open bite, due to a pacifier, which can be corrected if the habit is stopped. Similarly here, you can see this child with thumb sucking and you can see the intraoral clinical features wherein there's an open bite or there's a gap between the maxillary and mandibular anterior teeth. We do undertake interceptive orthodontics. We give various removal appliances which are used to correct the habits so that the malocclusion is corrected. Coming on to again, interceptive orthodontics, minor malocclusions, like a simple anterior crossbite, what you see here, a single tooth anterior crossbite can be corrected with removable appliances, minor rotations, which can be corrected with removable appliances. And of course, in a small child, you can see the anterior crossbite, which is present, which is again corrected using removable expansion appliances. So at a very young age, we can see these cases and we can employ preventive orthodontics or interceptive orthodontics to correct the 
occlusal problems which are existing. Coming on to prosthodontics, you might think, do we come across children without teeth? Oh yes, here's a case, we can see this child, a patient of mine, who has got congenitally missing lower anterior teeth in the primary dentition. Now you can see the orthopantomogram or the radiograph. The child has even missing permanent successors. And that's the reason you can see the alveolar ridge very thin and narrow. And she is rehabilitated with a partial denture similar to a removable space maintainer. Now this is done at a very young age wherein the child is trained to remove the appliance and place the appliance back. Again, you would be wondering how about complete dentures in a young patient. And this is a patient whom I've treated many years back. And I apologize for the poor quality of the picture. And this is published as a case report in the year 1995 in the Journal of Clinical Pediatric Dentistry. Child had undergone total extraction due to severe early childhood caries. And he had no teeth. And he wasn't willing to go to school without teeth. He was around five years of age when we rehabilitated him with a complete denture. And there he is smiling and he was going to school after he was trained to use the complete denture. As in when the permanent successors started erupting, we made room for, by adjusting or by trimming the complete denture to make space for the permanent successors to erupt. So we need to know even the basic principles with regard to prosthodontics. Growth and development. We should know thoroughly the growth and development of children right from birth to adolescence, right from the period of infancy to the period of toddler. You can see here the child with developing the fine grasp power and the toddler wherein the child learns to walk and of course the school age group. All these fundamental principles of growth and development should be known thoroughly. Coming on to general and oral pathology, as pediatric dentists, we should know about oral pathological lesions or oral pathological conditions which might exist in children. Here's a child, a newborn child with a tooth which is called as a natal tooth and which creates an ulcer on the tongue and which makes it difficult for the child to be fed. And many a times a child is referred to us by a pediatrician with regard to the tooth which is present, how to manage. In some cases, based on the severity, we do undertake extraction at a very young age. Here you can see congenitally missing primary teeth, a conical shaped primary tooth. You can see here the fusion of two primary teeth, they're joined together. And of course, there is an extra tooth here. That's a mesiodense and an additional tooth in the midline, which leads to occlusal problems and alignment problems. And here's another child who has got uh, lesions on the lip and intraoral lesions, which are due to herpes simplex virus infection. And then moving on to pediatric dentistry clinic, the difference compared to other clinics in a pediatric dentistry clinic, you would find the clinic to be more colorful, more brighter compared to the other clinics. This is the clinic which we have in our institution can see well decorated. We do have periodontic chairs with cartoon characters and the, all these to make the children more comfortable in the dental environment. And these are again periodontic clinics with an attached TV monitor to make it more comfortable to them, to distract them, to use the various behavior management techniques during the treatment procedure. And again, another pediatric dentistry clinic, wherein the child is comfortably seated here. And we always try to use four-handed dentistry for treatment of children. That's my assistant sitting by my side to assist me with regard to passing on the materials for restoration, even to pass on the light cure unit. And the child is very comfortable undergoing treatment with a rubber dam application. Now moving on to the syllabus for the BDS course in pediatric dentistry. Pediatric dentistry is taught to you in two years, starts from the third BDS and it's also there in your final BDS curriculum. So two years you would have both theory and clinical sessions. In third year we have 20 hours of didactic sessions, sessions 
and in fourth year we have 45 hours of didactics so the syllabus is given here which is prescribed by the dental council of india and the rajiv gandhi university of dental sciences or health sciences the third year again the topics are given and the number of hours allotted for each of these topics and this is the first topic which you have that is introduction to pediatric and preventive dentistry which i am dealing with today in final bds again we have 45 hours didactic sessions and practical or clinical hours is 130 hours wherein you will be taught the various clinical aspects in pediatric dentistry the examination the pre clinical part the in third year with regard to the wire bending exercises the discussion topics are all given in your syllabus the scheme of examination internal ex assessment examination the pattern for the final examination is also given by the university as for the dci norms the recommended textbooks the list is given here the first and foremost dentistry for child and adolescent currently known as macdonald's dentistry for child and adolescent and the various books as a list of 12 books which are given and these are some of the books the first one being macdonald and avery's dentistry for child and adolescents and we have fundamentals of pediatric dentistry and pediatric dentistry infancy through adolescents there's a handbook of pediatric dentistry and pediatric orofacial medicine and pathology and these are some of the indian books pediatric dentistry by shobha tanden and pediatric dentistry by dr s g damle and these are two books which are approved or recognized by the dental council of india as well as rajiv gandhi university of health sciences in your curriculum so these are the referral books which could be used and staff from the department have contributed to the book pediatric dentistry by shobha tanden there are also various journals which are available in pediodontics the first one being the journal of american academy of pediatric dentistry there is also the journal of clinical pediatric dentistry the various other journals which includes even european journal of pediatric dentistry and of course our own journal of indian society of pediodontics and preventive dentistry so to summarize i introduce the subject pediodontics or pediatric dentistry to you i had given the definition of pediodontics the unique aspects of pediodontics the various aims and objectives of pediodontics the differences between a child and an adult patient and i had mentioned about pediodontic treatment triangle with the modification which is given as pediatric treatment triangle and of course discuss the scope of pediodontics thank you